Hey everyone, this is Darkstar, and today it's going to be a short video about why you should count cards. I know the title says how to count cards, and we're going to talk about how to count cards too. But no point in talking about how to count cards unless you know why to count cards. And at the end, I'm going to have a cool counting trick for you that nobody else knows about. Okay? I developed this myself, and nobody else knows about it. I don't think anybody else uses it besides myself and maybe a few people that I've taught it to. So stay tuned for that at the end. All right, so why do we count cards? So the reason that you count cards is to determine when you should bet more and when you should bet less or not at all. And also how you should play your hand. You're basically keeping track of certain cards in the deck so that you know what cards are left. So you, as, as cards are being dealt, the blackjack is a little bit different than other games in the casino in that most games in the casino are what we call independent random events, right? So when you throw, when you throw the dice, just because you get an eight doesn't mean you can't get an eight the next time. Just because you throw a seven doesn't mean you can't throw another seven. But in blackjack, once you remove a card, it's not played again until you shuffle, right? So usually they use more than one deck. But if you were playing single deck blackjack, for example, and you had, you had something like this being dealt on the first hand, Right? Ace three, ten ace, two blackjacks, right? Blackjack, blackjack, ace three, dealer's got a ace up. Maybe the dealer's got blackjack, right? Alright, so now you think anyone's getting blackjack on the next hand? Right, it's impossible. Because we're only playing with a single deck and one, two, three, four aces already came out. So, guess what? You just performed card counting because you kept track that there was four aces already dealt and you knew there was none left. So that's how you can gain an advantage over the house because you can predict the cards that are going to come out of that shoe. Now, sure, you don't always play with single deck. In fact, you almost never play with single deck. Because you're not counting cards so that you can win more hands then you lose. No matter what, you're still going to lose more hands than you win. And even when the count is in the player's favor, the player is still going to lose more hands than he or she wins. The difference is that in blackjack, if you get a blackjack, you get paid one and a half times your bet. But if the dealer gets blackjack, and assuming you don't, the dealer, or the house, only gets one times your bet. So you can trade back and forth blackjacks with the house all night, and you will definitely come out ahead. Also, more of your double downs will work. Okay, I'm not going through all of the rules of blackjack, I'm assuming you know that, okay? But when you double down, you are more than likely to get a card that helps you, okay, when the count is high. Because when the count is high, what that means is that there are more of these kinds of cards in the deck than there are small cards, okay? So that favors the player. The fact that there's more tens and aces that can come out is a player advantage. Because blackjacks pay a premium to the player, but not to the house. And because getting a 10 on a double down will help you. And also, if the dealer draws a 10, it is likely to bust the dealer. Okay, But on the majority of the time, when the count is high, that just means you're going to get hands like 19, 18, 20, but so is the dealer. 
Sometimes your total will be higher than the others, than the dealers. Other times it won't be. The other thing where the player can take advantage of the count and the dealer can't is you actually get to make playing decisions. <clears throat> the dealer always has to hit till she gets to 17. Okay? You don't have to. So if the count is high and the dealer has 15, she has to take another card no matter what. If you have 15 and the count is high, you can choose to stand. I'm not going to get this more advanced video, get into that in some of the other videos. In fact, I have a whole training course that would tell you how high it needs to be for you to stand on that 15 versus this 10 and when you would hit it. But for now, the important thing to know is that sometimes it would make sense for you to stand on that. Okay? You might lose anyway. But in some cases, the dealer will have that same small card underneath like you did and draw the big card. Right? Better her than you. So, that's why you count. Now, how to count cards. There are several different counting systems out there. The most basic, well, maybe not the most basic, not, not the most simple, but the most commonly used and one of the easiest is the high-low count. And with the high-low count, all you simply do is you assign a value of one to any card two through six. Any two through six gets a value of one. So when you see two, three, four, five, or six, you think in your head, plus one, okay? Or one. Anytime you see a 10, and when I say 10, I mean a 10 valued card, which means any 10, those are 10s in the game of blackjack. So is that. Okay, and there's no particular order to these, so it doesn't matter how I stack them up here. Okay, so they're all 10s. And for the purposes of the high-low count, an ace. So there you can see it's what we call a balanced count because there's five cards over here and five cards over here. Okay, so these are all negative one. When you see one of these cards, you think negative one, okay? So plus one, plus two, plus three, you know, and then minus one, now you're down to two. One, zero, negative one, negative two, negative one, right? So that's where it gets interesting, counting with negative numbers is sometimes a challenge for some people. And what I like to do is instead of thinking in my head negative one, minus one, any of those things, just think M1 or N1, okay? It's a lot easier, I know, even in your head, even though you're not gonna be doing this out loud, please don't do it out loud at the table. Uh, not that I've never seen that. And uh, try not to move your lips either. Uh, nothing wrong with card counting in terms of, you know, it's not illegal, but casinos like to win. They don't like us winning, really, even though they pretend to. So, anyway, a good way to practice is to just take a deck of cards, all right, and shuffle them up, all right, a few times. And just take one card out and set it aside, all right? And don't look at it. And then go through the deck one card at a time now. Sevens, eights, and nines don't count for anything. They're just neutral, they're just zero. So you don't have to do anything with that. You don't have to think anything. Just ignore that, okay? So there we have M1, minus one, or I think M1. M2, back to M1, even. M1, M2, M1, 
M2, M1, M2, M3, M4, M5, M4, M3, M4, M5, M6, M5, M6, M5, still M5, M4, M3, still M3, M2, M1, still M1, still M1, still M1, still M1, still M1, even, one. Hey, we're positive now. Now, interesting place to stop here for a second. You're plus one. And then you, this is where another skill is coming, and I'll teach you this in another video, is deck penetration, okay? We only have one deck here. But as you can see, we only have about a quarter of a deck left, okay? So there's a difference between what the running count is. Right now, the running count is plus one. The true count is actually plus one divided by the number of decks remaining. And in this case, it would be divided by a quarter of a deck. Now, for those of you that are not great with math, that's okay. But dividing by a quarter of a deck is the same as multiplying by four, right? So, that means that right now, the true count is actually four. This would be a great time to boost up your bet, okay? So let's just see what would happen. I did not set this up ahead of time. Let's say you increased your bet right now. Let's see what happens, okay? First of all, the count just went from one to three, and it's still staying at three. I, I couldn't have set this up any better. That's a definite double down. It's a double down anyway, just basic strategy, but this is, illustrates the point of what I was talking about. Now, I don't know what's gonna happen. We might end up losing. So you double down, and you end up with 16, okay? Probably gonna end up losing. Nope, look at that, okay? Now the dealer has 13, the dealer has to draw. 14, 21, there it is. See, doesn't work. <laughs> I'm kind of glad this happened. Like I said, I didn't set this up ahead of time, right? Okay, so now this happens all the time, by the way, okay? It's a perfect double down. You're gonna win those most of the time, but guess what, not all the time, okay? So, dealer ends up with 21, you end up with 16. Now what happened to the count? We were at one, two, three, four, five, back down to four, okay? Plus, don't forget this one here that we don't know about yet. But we're at four. Let's do another hand. Five, well, I hope I didn't count wrong. All right, count is still at five. You've got 12 against eight. Gotta hit that. Count goes down to four, and we lost. And the dealer has a 10, count goes down to three. Okay? Only a few cards left here. I don't know, well, there's four cards left here. Three, now there's three. Count is even, okay? Stand on the 20, count is negative one you push okay so that did not illustrate my point as far as winning as you ended up losing on that with the uh, dealer getting 21 but it's an important lesson like I said you're not always gonna win now we're at negative one so we now want to check to see if we counted right which is what this card is for that you pulled out okay if I counted right then this should be a small card, a two, three, four, five, or six. All right, looks like I counted right. So that's the important thing. Even though we lost that double down and the next hand, and then we pushed, at least we counted right. And in the long run, this will work out in your favor. All right, thanks for watching all the way to the end here. This is your reward. This is a system that I developed for keeping track of aces in a multi-deck shoe, okay? So, 
if you're keep if you're keeping a side count of aces, it makes sense to do it using letters rather than numbers. You're keeping the regular count in terms of numbers. And I do this with a count that doesn't involve aces to begin with, okay? So I don't use the high low. I use a different count and it doesn't have aces as part of it. So then I keep a separate side track of aces. So I count aces when you see one ace that's A, two aces B, C, so on and so forth, okay? Now, if you have more than two decks, this gets pretty cumbersome. You know, you start getting beyond H. Are you really going to know, you know, where you're at in the alphabet? You know, you can know right away C is the third letter of the alphabet, okay? But what's the 16th letter of the alphabet? You know, I don't even know off the top of my head, all right? So you don't want to have to try to make that calculation while you're sitting at the table. So what I do is I just count A, B, C, and then, well, you'll see in the uh, video here how it works. So if you buy a stack of white chips, okay, you got your, your white chips, and that's, you know, it's probably more than 10, doesn't matter. And you got your other chips here, okay, some reds, which are five, and then you got some greens, okay. So And you're playing, right? So what I do is every time... I see four aces, so A, B, C, D, I get to D, I drop a chip, okay? And I, you know, I try to do it casually, so, you know, they don't necessarily know what I'm doing now. Don't worry about it too much either. If they, if they figure out that you're using these chips to count, and they figure out you're using these chips to count aces, they might think that all you're doing is counting aces. And that's fine, because they're not going to take you too seriously as a card counter if all you're doing is keeping track of aces, okay? You're not going to be able to gain that much of an edge if you're just keeping track of aces and nothing else. And that might be what they think, okay? Or they might just think you're playing with chips like a lot of people do, okay? So I've never been called out for this, by the way, for this particular thing. I've been called out for other things, but not for this, <laughs> all right? So, uh, and what's important about the ace side count is you wanna know how many aces have been dealt compared to how many you would have expected have been dealt, okay? So that's the beautiful thing about this system. Let's say I got one, chip drop down here. That represents one deck of aces, four aces, one deck worth of aces. And then I look to the discard tray, right? And I see that there is about a deck in the discard tray. So that means we have about as many aces as we'd expect. Now if I see two more aces come out, okay, and there's only a few more cards in here, right, in the next few cards, and there's two of those cards are aces, Okay, so we're still estimating this at only about a deck, but now we have a deck of aces plus two more, okay, six aces. We have two more aces than we would expect to have, okay? So we are short in the shoe by two aces, okay? So what that means is that whatever your running count is in your high up to one, you're going to subtract two. So let's say you're at a running count of eight for your high up to one, and you've dropped one chip down, meaning a deck of aces, plus you got two more, you're at B, so you're at, you see this one chip and you're at B. You now have to subtract two from that eight. You have a running count of eight, minus two extra aces that you saw. You now are gonna bet as if you had a running count of six, okay? Now, you're not gonna know how much to bet yet because I haven't taught you the true count. That's the next lesson, that's module five. Module five, I'm gonna teach you the true count, and then you'll know how much to bet. But for now, I just want you to understand how the system works. So you drop one chip down, and you're at B. Let's say you saw those two more aces. Okay, and then you see another ace, C. Another ace, D, oh, great. Play around with your chips while you're making your bet or whatever, and let one fall, okay? Now you got two chips there, okay? So now you got two decks worth of aces, okay? And you start back over again. You're watching the cards come out. Oh, there's another ace. A. Okay, a few more hands. B. C. Okay. Once you get back to D again, you know, you maybe 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 throw them a tip and drop one chip here. Okay? Alright, you're reinforcing that that's why you bought these chips in the first place was for the tip. Okay? Thanks for watching. Please remember to like the video if you did like it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. I'll send you updates whenever we make a video. Uh, a lot of videos are much better than this one. <laughs> um, and uh, 
Even if you didn't like the video, subscribe anyway. There's no cost to subscribing. Thank you all again.